uh, informal, so if you have questions about the product, uh, I'll be happy to, to answer them as we go. Um, excellent. Everybody online seems to have picture and sound. So, um, I'm going to give you a brief tour of the XWP1. There's several different layers to this product. Um, we call it a performance synth for a reason in that, first of all, um, it's designed to give the keyboard player instant access to sounds. Um, so, right from the front panel, um, if we can switch, right here beneath the display, if I'm in tone mode, um, I can select any of these sounds by category. So, you know, for the keyboard player, we've got uh, great multi strike stereo pianos. And there's also all of your other gig ready keyboard instruments, your Rhodes, um, your um, string sounds, and there's a variety of string sounds in here. Of course, we've got uh, some great synth strings. There's a section for guitars and basses, um, various, that's where we have drum sounds. And the cool thing about the XWP1 is that all of the sounds can be edited. If I want to do something in particular um, to one of the sounds, I can quickly grab a knob and change it. So in the case of the piano, if I'm looking for a brighter piano, I can just grab the cutoff knob up here on the right hand side. And now I've got a much brighter piano maybe for a rock and roll gig. Um, there's room for you to store hundreds of your own sounds as well. Um, all you have to do once you've made an edit is just hit the right button and you can name and store your sounds. All right. Rather than the keyboard, no, uh, no data card or anything you need? Uh, in fact, um, any sounds, the question is uh, do you need to have an SD card or something to store edits? N the answer is no. You can, um, you can back things up to an SD card, but the, the internal memory will support hundreds of your own presets. So absolutely. I'll just take a quick look at the feed and see if there's any questions here. All right. Overhead video is a little slow. Yep, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have to deal with it the best we can <laughs> for this clinic tonight. So um, appreciate. I know there's probably a little bit of a lag between uh, what I'm playing and what you might be seeing, but yes. uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, all right. So one of the things that makes the XWP1 particularly unique, in addition just to the you know the 400 sample based sounds that are in the product, um, is that there are three specialty engines that that generate specific kinds of sounds. Um, the one that uh, um, actually is 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 my favorite um, is is the solo synth engine, and this is a um, monophonic lead synthesizer. So it, it's designed to give the keyboard player you know, the types of sounds that will allow him to, to compete with his guitarist in the band, uh, play some classic uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer types of things, or have a, a vintage uh, Moog-style bass in a tune. Um, there's 100 um, solo synth patches this is the, the, the very first one that comes up when you turn on the machine, um, just called XW Solo Synth. So there's, in, in each of the Solo Synth presets, there's a lot of real-time control. Um, the knobs up here on the front panel have uh, fixed assignments. The first knob is my cutoff. The second knob is filter resonance, so if we really want it to squeal, crank up the resonance actually to the point where it'll overdrive a little bit. We also have attack and release control right there from the front panel. 
Now when you're in, uh, when you're controlling any sound on the XWP1, you'll notice the, the little LED over here on the left hand side. And that actually shows the function of the sliders below. So one thing that's cool about this product, um, and of course there's many, uh, but the solo synth is actually six oscillators. So six different components make up a single solo synth sound. And uh, so as long as I have this button selected up here on the top, I can use the sliders to modify that sound in real time and control the levels of each of those components. actually hearing five out of the six different oscillators right now. Um, the sixth one, the one we didn't hear, uh, is for an external source. So you can actually plug um, another device into the back of the XWP1 and process it through the filters and the envelopes and everything the machine has to offer. So uh, we do have a handy spot over here for a device such as an iPad. Um, so if you're running um, an application on there, be it a cool app like the Animog app or um, any of the hundreds, you know, of course GarageBand being the, the, um, uh, a great one. Um, you can set your iPad here and bring it through the line input on the back of the machine and you, have, uh, you can then process that through, um, through the SoloSynth engine. So I'm going to take a quick look at the questions real fast. And da, 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 da. yes, we're listening. Uh, we've got some Genelec 1031s here. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Just move slow when I'm pointing out the knobs. Okay, George, excellent. And let's see if there's some other quick questions here. We have full video. Everything's working. All right. So one of the things I'm going to take some time to um, to show people that we don't normally get to do, like at a quick Nam show demo is some of the, the depth in the engine itself. And you have a question, yes. Can the those slider movements and the knob movements that you were showing, uh -huh. you know where I'm going with that already? Yeah. Does the MIDI and kit, so can it be sequenced and uh, automated in that way? Yes. The question, uh, for those of you in the, on the internet, the question is, can can the knob movements be recorded? Can you, can you automate a sound um, via an external sequencer or using our internal step sequencer and um, the question is, uh, the answer is yes. Um, there's a couple ways to do that. Um, I'll get to the step sequencer in a little bit, but we have um, four what we call controller tracks within the step sequencer, and those allow you to apply to apply automation to other existing tracks. So in a controller track, you could record a filter movement and then apply it to one of the instrument parts. Okay, um, and one last look. What about the patches of the CZ series synthesizers? Um, the XWP1 has some of the waveforms from the CZ series synthesizers built in. In fact, in that last patch that I was playing you, if I pull up uh, one of these, that's actually one of the waveforms from, from a CZ synthesizer. Um, and Basically, the way the architecture is laid out, you have um, two virtual analog style oscillators, uh, synth 1 and synth 2, and there's about 300 different waveforms to choose from. And the, the, uh, one of the reasons that these two, the first two oscillators stand out from the, other, uh, from the next two, which are strictly sample based, is that you get some things like pulse width modulation, uh, you can also sync two oscillators together uh, for that hard sync sound. Uh, that's all right. We have phones going off here at, at Planet 10. That's right. <laughs> no big deal. Um, so, if, if in fact, if I'm going to go to a completely blank patch here and just show you some of the things that are available, and I'm going to zoom in on this uh, overhead cam a little bit on the display. Uh, bear with me just a moment.
So I understand there's a little bit of lag with the uh, video and what I'm saying on the uh, the overhead cam here. So um, I've gone to a completely blank, untitled solo synth patch, and we're just going to hit the edit button just to show you um, a little bit about the architecture. And the first thing you'll see on this screen um, is that uh, we can access the individual what we call oscillator blocks. And at the top of the screen you can see which of the six oscillators you're editing. And they're labeled Synth 1, Synth 2, PCM1, PCM2, um, external source, and the last one being your noise generator. So. Um, right here on the front of the keyboard, I think you can see my finger, um, we can switch between any of those different parts pretty easily. Currently, Synth 1 is the only one turned on, and it's defaulting um, to a basic uh, sine wave, I believe. So on the Synth 1 page, if I choose Oscillator, um, this is where I can choose what type of waveform I'm using. And there's, as I said, about 300 different types of waveforms available. Um, some of them, um, I would say actually the, uh, the majority are sample based. But we do, as I said, have some additional control here over um, oscillators one and two to do some things like pulse width modulation and oscillator sync. Um, so here you can see, and here's my little um, sidetrack that there are many of the original CZ series type waveforms in here. So resonant saw, as well as you know pulse waveforms. Square waves. And just hundreds of different waveforms to choose from. I believe there's um, over 50 of those are based on the CZ series waveforms. But there's some great sounding things. You might recognize some of the other abbreviations um, from other classic keyboards over the ages. So I'm going to give you uh, just a tour of some of the other synth type sounds in the XWP1. And as I'm adjusting the camera, Aquarius, to answer your question, um, the overall polyphony of the unit is 64 voices. Um, a solo synth patch, as we discussed, can use up to six oscillators. So that could use, with one note, six notes of polyphony. But we have 64 notes of polyphony available in the entire, entire machine. All right, so I'm just going to take you through a few other of my favorite solo synth patches just to give you a little bit of the range of the machine. One of the things I like um, is that within the solo synth, um, there's a lot of control to modulate things in real time. Um, here's a, a pretty cool lead I made. And I set this one up, if you can see the name on the screen, it's called PortaSynth. I have it set up. So the sustain pedal is actually controlling my portamento time. So just by putting my foot on the sustain pedal, we've got different uh, portamento time for each of the, uh, the oscillators set up. And you guys are watching it on the iPad while I'm standing in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was perfect. Perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. And just checking the question list, and we're good. All right. So that is uh, just an example, again, of kind of one of the more modulated patches. Here's another one, um, again, showing the capabilities of the solo synth. Patch like this, you know, we can even turn on the arpeggiator. There's an arpeggiator switch here on the front panel. Twist the cutoff knob. Okay. 
In this particular patch, I actually have it set up again with the module, uh, this, in this case, the modulation wheel doing a pretty extreme modulation. <laughs> taking the pitch of each of those oscillators in a completely different direction. So there's a lot of depth to the solo synth. Um, I would, uh, if even if you don't own an XW product, uh, one of the cool ways you can learn about its architecture is to go to our website, uh, casio.com. You can download the, uh, the Mac or PC voice editor and actually get in and look at what is possible within the machine even if you don't have one connected so it's a great way to check out the architecture and and you know see what's under the hood here All right. so there's 100 solo synth patches again a couple more of my favorites uh, I mentioned uh, earlier that we have things like uh, you know the classic lucky man sound so uh, I'm not going to play it uh, for any uh... so, so I'm not making Keith Emerson proud at this moment but uh, that gives you the idea that we can do all those kinds of uh, classic synthesizer lead sounds are in here in addition to some of those first ones that uh, have a ton of edge um, there's great bass sounds This is a nice, really great legato bass, so it slides smoothly from note to note. Just a classic sound. So, um, actually, while I'm on this sound, um, this is a good time, and I'm going to show a couple examples of this um, tonight. Um, there's a cool thing on the XWP1 called a phrase sequencer. And a phrase sequencer is a, a way to capture a performance, um, a riff. A bass line, um, it could be a comping part. Use your imagination. Um, you could play some piano. Uh, in fact, in fact, let's just let's just do it with piano. I'll give you an idea how how this works. Um, switching out of the solo synth category, so so I have a piano selected. Um, I'm going to hit the record button right here on the front panel, uh, and this brings up the phrase recorder menu. Uh, for those of you that have an XWP1 already, um, if you um, normally by default when you press this button, you're going to hear a metronome. I've turned I've turned the click off. Um, so for now, the, the 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 timing doesn't doesn't matter. I'm just going to play sort of free form just to show you that uh, if I play something. And so I've, re I've recorded something into the phrase sequencer, and now um, if I hit the play button on the front, of course, it's playing back my mistake. <laughs> um, but what's particularly unique about the phrase sequencer is that I can assign that phrase to a key or a range of keys. So there's a button here on the front labeled key play, and with that turned on, I can now take that riff and transpose it on the fly. You already they have the, the sequence. Okay. So there's kind of there's a lot of examples of ways you can of ways you can use this, and I can jump around from from different to different sound categories to just give you an example. You can use the phrase recorder. Just as, uh, and, and some keyboards used to have a feature called chord hold in the past. Mm -hmm. So um, if, if you need, uh, you know, um, something that's just sustaining for an extended period of time, well, the, the phrase sequencer is one way to do that. So I could just grab a, you know, this E major chord here, E flat major chord here, and hold it for a little bit with this particular patch. And now that I've got that, I can use that okay, in different keys. All right. So the particularly amazing thing about the phrase sequencer is when you get to a performance, you can choose which sounds are responding to the phrase and which sounds are not. 
Okay, so um, I'm just gonna pull up one more example um, of a phrase, and I think I'm gonna refer to this a couple nights because I, I or a couple times tonight because I just have so much fun with with the phrase sequencer, and it's uh, such a creative tool. Um, when I first got the XWP one, I was playing around with okay, what kinds of songs can I pull off with this machine? You know, I'm listening, and and, and I think. My son who's here, he and I had recently watched the, the Tron movie on DVD and, and there's some great electronic music in that song. And so I, you know, I put the beat into the step sequencer and we're going to circle back in a little while and talk about how to, how to make beats in the step sequencer. But one of the things I was trying to figure out is how am I going to pull off the bass line? Um, because it's a longer riff, it doesn't really rhythmically fit into the grid that everything has to live in on our step sequencer. So I use the phrase sequencer. So I, I have, in this case, a performance where my left hand is playing the bass line. Okay. So the phrase sequencer can help you out when you don't have a hand free to do something. Um, another example where I've, I've used that where, again, this is a situation where um, this was just something that was difficult to play. <laughs> and um, this is, you know, a, um, I think a, a song that uh, people will recognize. Uh, and by the way, this this example uses a factory patch on on the XWP one. This is a a hex layer sound um, called African layer. So you might have heard of. Oops, uh, hang on. Okay, you've heard that riff before. But then there's the little part in fourths that you have to play over the top. And who has that kind of dexterity? I don't anymore. I don't have enough time to practice. So. Um, you can accomplish that type of thing with the phrase sequencer. So I, 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 I slowed the tempo way down and I played the riff. And then I assigned that riff to a key. So in this example, I even have the drum pattern in here. Alright, so the phrase sequencer is is an absolute blast. I've got a couple of other things in regards to the phrase sequencer that I'm going to show you tonight. Um, but I would encourage you, um, just as you're playing with individual sounds on the XWP1, you know, reach up and hit record, maybe while you're uh, playing along with a drum rhythm, and and start integrating the the, the phrase sequencer and things that you're doing that you're doing. Um, all right, so I'm just taking a quick look at the questions. Um, all right, not too many questions coming from the online group. Um, yeah, there's a comment about the, the new editor that's online. Um, the editor has been updated recently, so again, uh, keep an eye on Casio.com uh, for updates to not only the editor, but uh, we've even done a firmware update for the XWP ones, which added some features. So keep an eye on our website. Um, so back to the sounds. That was a little bit of a detour. Um, we're going to go now from, uh, we were demonstrating some of the solo synth patches, but I'm going to dive into hex layers since we were just playing one of the hex layer patches on here. Um, so earlier we talked about how a solo synth patch is a single sound made up of six, six layers. Well, a hex layer is the same idea. It's a single patch that's up to six layers deep. The difference here is obviously it's, it's polyphonic. So we can do some, some bigger, more complex sounds in a hex layer. Um, that's okay. Again, 64 notes of polyphony. Okay, so um, it is possible that um, you could, you know, chew up some voices here using playing, playing, if you're playing, you know, some, some dense chords, I guess. Uh, but uh, in general, it's nothing to worry about. Uh, so 
in its absolute simplest form, uh, you could take six similar sounds and stack them in a hex layer to create something that's big. All right, so actually the very first hex, I believe this is the first hex layer preset. I've made a minor change to it. Yes, it is. Um, the very first hex layer preset is just called polysynth. And, you know, I'm not going to play jump, but, you know, we've all heard, you know, these big, <laughs> and these big sawtoothy sounds uh, that, you know, keyboardists love, of course. So um, when we've got a hex layer, we don't have full real time control over the filter. Okay, we only have full real time control over the filter in, in the, the solo synth engine. So um, we can, however, control the filter, but that change in the filter is with each stroke on the keyboard. All right. Okay. So, um, so for example, if I if I play a chord and turn the knob, I don't I don't I don't hear it making any changes. It is going to happen with each subsequent key press. All right. Um, you know, as we get into the step sequencer, and again, there's there's so much depth to this machine, you realize, okay, yeah, this little CPU is doing so much. We understand maybe that you know Casio couldn't fit everything we wanted in in, in our first synth. I mean, the XWP1 is Casio's first synth in in over 20 years. So um, you know, and uh, we haven't talked much about price, but I assume most people that are watching the clinic know that this thing's about 500 bucks and really bangs a, a lot of uh, pop for that money. So, back to this polysynth sound. So we can control the filter. We can control the detuning of each of the layers. We can control the attack. And the release. So, um, and if we get in and into editing, uh, of course we can change much more about this sound, but it's pretty cool to start with a, you know, that bright sawtooth patch and turn it into a really warm pad. Kind of like spectrum. Okay. So. At any time, if, if again, you've, you've, you've turned a knob and you, you make a change, uh, you can just hit the right button and, and store that as a completely new sound. So another thing with the XWP-1 um, is that the when you're in a hex layer mode, the sliders give you control over each of the volume levels of those components. So it's similar to the solo synth in that regard, that you can mix and blend those sounds on the fly. Uh, so here's a, another quick example. And uh, I'm going to move the camera here just a touch. There's two sort of sawtoothy layers that I can blend. So layer six here is just that bass sound. So it's much like a uh, an old-fashioned uh, vector synthesizer, the way you can blend different components together on the fly. So um, it is it is really incredible. Um, another example, you know, the XWP one we touched upon piano sounds earlier. Of course, you can you can mix the acoustic sounds into a hex layer preset. So. So again, the the uh, the nature of this product and just being able to grab something and instantly change it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a reason we call it performance synthesizer on the front. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Um, and so again, we're, we're, we're still dealing with a single patch. A hex layer is a single, pro, a single tone on an XWP1. We still have a performance mode where you can have a hex layer and three other sounds at one time. So technically, if you were to stack them all, which I don't know that that's the most practical thing, but you could have nine going at once. Yes, question from here at Planet 10. <laughs> the, uh, so with the hex layer sounds, is it, is, do, are you able to, um, like, say, have the piano that plays and then use a, like, the harder you hit it, it triggers a different sound? Yeah, yeah. okay. So, so the, the question uh, for, for the, the question is, um, are there other ways besides the sliders to bring in different sounds? Basically, can can I play the keyboard perhaps harder or softer to trigger different instruments? Um, absolutely. Um, so, just in this example, a little orchestral preset. Okay, I play the keyboard harder, and now we have timpani and brass. Yeah. So, ab absolutely. Um, so. The cool thing about hex layers is these sounds can be split, layered, or velocity switched. Okay. Okay. Mm, so it's it's really really flexible um, to to build uh, you know patches that and you know sticking in the orchestral realm here. Um, <laughs> play the keyboard harder and the pipe organ and the, uh, the timpani comes in. So uh, you could easily set it up where you're playing a, a clav type sound and then you, you, um, you play harder and you're triggering a brass instrument as an example. And with the hex layer you're also able to bring in, like you mentioned, you can bring in a sound from an outside source? No. Um, the question, uh, for those of you that can't hear, uh, is can you process an external sound in a hex layer? No, the, the only place that happens is within the solo synth engine. And so they're, they're actually completely distinct engines. I cannot use the solo synth engine and the hex layer engine at the same time. They're two separate entities. Okay. Okay. So you're, you're a software guy. These are two plugins that I can't run at the same time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take a quick look at the chat window at the questions, so bear with me just one second. Um, no, it's okay. Um, bum, bum, bum. So, uh, George, uh, or Geosync55, sorry, I recognize the screen name, and uh, the question is, can the phrase sequencer act as a real-time controller for the filter? So, um, great question, uh, George. The the phrase sequencer will record anything. Uh, it'll record knob movements. It'll re it'll record, uh, for example, if I were to, uh, I mean, this is a, a completely ridiculous example. I mean, I'll keep it on this front view. Um, if I were to record nothing but pitch bend information, which is what I'm doing right now, <laughs> and I've recorded that as a phrase. <laughs> And I'm back on this this stock solo synth patch. Um, if I trigger that phrase, oh. okay, the, the the pitch bend information that was recorded in the phrase is now being applied to this part. Uh, it would happen with piano. <laughs> so um, so you can record filter movements. You can record pitch wheels. All, anything that's happening on the keyboard will be captured in the phrase recorder. Question. So, yes, another question here. Can you store all those phrases in the external? Yes, uh, you can store 100 phrases. The question is, can, can you store the phrases after you've done them? Yeah. And, and the answer is yes. You can store. And reload them. You, you can want. store 100 in the memory, okay. and you can save more on your card. Another question. Yeah, I'm almost done. If you use our editor, you can even import MIDI files and have those as phrases. Okay. So a phrase, oh, a phrase, cool. a phrase could be a drum pattern. A phrase could be things like um, um, 
guitarist drums. So there's a company called Twiddly Bits that sells MIDI files for those types of things. Bass line phrases, guitar drums. You could import thousands or hundreds of those at a time. Yeah. Can you export and import individual phrases? You can save them um, individually. individually. The, qu the question is, um, if, if you're saving things to SD card, are you saving all of them or one at a time? Uh, what's the flexibility? So the, the great thing is the file system is really flexible. Um, I, can, I can either do um, an all save, which is everything that's on the machine, or I can do individual components. Okay, um, with our editor, the Mac and PC editor, you have the ability to uh, rearrange those, put them in a particular order, so that way later on, you know, it might be a little bit easier way of naming things and, and keeping organized. But and that Mac and PC editor comes with the unit. It's um, the 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 editor doesn't come with the unit. Uh, you have to download it from our website. So there isn't a, any software in the box. It is free. It's free. Okay. It is free. All right. All right, so we were talking about hex layer patches. We got a little distracted, but that's that's what this event is all about. That's what's that's why we're doing this. All right, thanks, George. Uh, there we go. Um, Patrick has a question: Is the fourth wave always? Patrick, I don't know if if I'm completely understanding your question. Um, maybe you rephrase it a different way. You have a question about hex layer and is the fourth layer always on? Um, you can turn any of the layers on and off. Of course, you have volume control using the sliders, uh, but a hex layer doesn't have to be six layers. Um, you don't have to be using up that much polyphony if you don't want to. So um, a lot of flexibility there. Um, there are 50 hex layer patches built into the machine. Um, I'll tell you that it does um, lend itself to to pads, synth synth textures, and things like that. So um, there are some gorgeous ones that, depending on how you play the keyboard, will give you different sounds. This one gives you a little bell tone. If I play the keyboard a little harder, and you know, a different patch if I play soft. So you, there's velocity switching. Um, there's sounds that have can have uh, essentially reverse envelopes. If I play softly, I hear it. Um, you can have them fade out. A lot of control within a hex layer patch. Um, this is one area in particular that we're focusing on for our first uh, library of sounds for the XWP1. We have uh, a lot of orchestral stuff that we have coming. Uh, but hex layers is, is um, we have a bank of those coming. Um, I did say by the end of May. It's been delayed slightly, but there'll be additional sounds that you can download for the XWP one at our website. This is actually at uh, Casio America's website, which is CasioMusicGear.com. So we'll have uh, some new hex layer patches available there soon. All right. So that's a little bit about the hex layers. Um, we'll probably hear some more in a little bit, um, but I'm going to move on to some other areas because um, we have a lot to cover. The third specialty engine um, is the drawbar organ mode. So in this case, the, the sliders over here on the left-hand side function as your drawbars. Um, so they, they work in the opposite direction of, of, uh, of the other modes, I guess, where we're pushing up to control volume in this case. You know, we're pulling down on the sliders to, to trigger um, to bring those draw bars in. What stops um, do you have? Well, we have, we have 50 presets built into the machine, um, mm -hmm. you know, but we have all nine draw bars. So okay. I, I'm not, I, I don't claim to be an organ player. Um, so bear with me a minute. I'll show you a couple cool things and some of the, some of the detail that is here. Um, and, uh, you know, let's just keep it on the front camera for I believe it just for that, for the purpose of the lag. Um, so one thing you'll notice with the XWP one, I pushed up all the draw bars, so we're not hearing anything. Um, over on the left hand side, we have dedicated controls, uh, for, I guess you want to see that, don't you? For percussion. Okay. So we can click our, 
uh, our, our third harmonic or our second harmonic. Um, so. This is a different symbol here. Uh, this is our, like again, if you think of it like a plug-in, yes. this is our third sort of specialty engine. Um, so, in fact, I'm going to move the camera here just to show you one thing for those of you that don't have an XW yet. Uh, I apologize for the, the video there. So, on the right-hand side, I'm going to move the camera just a little bit more. So on the right hand side, and this is where we select sounds by category, I have these five categories, pianos, strings, guitars, bass, synth, and various. And various is where I'll find drum kits and all kinds of things. All right. Um, there really is no limit there. I can have 15 of those going at once on 15 different MIDI channels. Okay. Okay. But on MIDI channel one, I choose one of these three, either my solo synth, a hex layer patch or my drawbar organ. Okay. okay, I only choose one of those at a time. So these are these are my my again my specialty engine on the XWP one. All right. So back to um, the drawbar organ mode, and I'll move this camera back out. There we go. So. Um, I have dedicated controls for key percussion. Again, second or third harmonics are available. Um, the last switch furthest over here to the left is a rotary speaker switch. Okay. Um, <laughs> the other question that comes up is, can you use your foot switch to trigger the rotary speaker? And the answer is yes. Um, so um, in a performance, you could set that up so the pedal is not functioning as a sustain, but it's functioning as, as a rotary control instead. Is there, is there multiple speed, like Celeste and Fast? Yeah, so yeah, we've got, um, again, our, our drawbar control over here on the left, so, um, you know, so we can, we can draw, dial in our organ sound and then... It's pretty, for, for 500 bucks? it's pretty not too bad. Yeah. Okay. So, um, granted, there are people that are spending $500 just for a Leslie simulator, such as the, the vent pedal. And there's people that buy the ventilator pedal when they've already bought a $2,000 organ clone of some kind. Mm -hmm. um, this $500 keyboard through that $500 pedal is rather remarkable. <laughs> so... Um, you know, it, it's great. Um, I'll also say that, you know, for organ sounds, and that's a whole, um, you know, group of people that are somewhat obsessed, and no offense to organ players, you're obsessed. Um, but um, there's guys that are using some of the software clones, too. And, um, again, these sliders will transmit all the controller information. So if you're using a product like VB3 um, or the older Native Instruments, um, B4, um, you can you can map the sliders um, in your software to control that, and you could use the knobs to control a distortion amount and things like that. You can so use it as a MIDI controller. use it absolutely as a MIDI controller for those types of programs. So um, there are 50 drawbar organ presets. Um, the display actually gives you you know it shows you graphically on the screen. Uh, if you'll switch back for me real quick there. The display will actually show you what drawbar position, position is being used um, as you go through the preset. So what's also cool is for somebody that's learning all about Hammond organ and stuff, there's a lot of presets here to get you started. Um, and there are some, you know, there's some, some overdrive, uh, organs with some overdrive in there. Um, there's some jazz organ presets, a little bit of everything. So. Some nice stuff. And again, uh, there's even things like uh, adjustable key click amounts. So I mean, there's a lot of attention to detail in this in this organ engine. Yes. 
and the food title is assignable to any kind of filter? Uh, no, no. Um, and we uh, on the XWP one, there's only one pedal input. No, no, no. I'm just saying you can assign anything to this pedal. Right? Um, not the the question for those of you online um, is: Can I assign the sustain pedal to do other things? Um, it depends on the type of sound that you want to control. Okay. With with the solo synth engine, yes. um, just about anything. Okay. If you can think of yes. it, yes. Um, so, uh, and and the one example I played earlier, um, I had taken um, was it this one? Uh, hold on, just one moment. I'll find it. I had assigned the sustain pedal. Uh, in this case, it's also doing sustain. Mm -hmm. But it's controlling my portamento switch. Okay, so the the um, there's there's a modulation matrix within the XW within the solo synth engine, and we call it virtual controllers. So you can pick, and let's just take it since you know this is we're online. Thanks. We're online. Let's just take the opportunity to take a look at it. Um, if I were to edit a particular patch um, on the main editing page, if I just scroll down, there's a section called Virtual Controllers. And here's where I can choose a source. Um, a source can be a knob, it can be a modulation wheel, it can be, um, you know, you choose all of your MIDI controllers from 0 through, you know, 127 are available, um, as well as some others that are internal. And you can choose your modulation as source, give it a depth and a destination. So in this particular example, I had used, used one of those. Um, I had used my hold pedal to control the portamento time of, in this case, synth oscillator number one. So when my foot is on the pedal, it's adding a depth of 58 to this existing patch. So it allows me to, you know, when I put my foot on the pedal to, to um, change that patch. So I could, likewise, I could change my destination to filter. Okay, so uh, let's do that. I'm changing my destination to my cutoff filter um, and let's make it close that filter when I put my foot on the pedal. So, so, for those of you that can't see my foot, I'm opening and closing that filter with um, the sustain pedal. Uh, and again, that just kind of shows that the flexibility of the engine is, is pretty remarkable. Oh yes, for like a performance, it's great. <laughs> it's great. How many pedals? Uh, uh, there's just one. There, there is only one one pedal input. And, and it, 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 is a, it is a foot switch input. Foot switch input. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, control? No. There's, not a, there's not a volume pedal input, unfortunately. Not yet. Not, yet. not, not on this product. Now, there's ways to add them, um, and yeah. the, you know, there's various, various other you know, MIDI accessory devices. One of the most <laughs> common ones, uh, MIDI Solutions, a company uh, called MIDI Solutions. You can find them on the web. Um, they make a bunch of accessories that allow you to add pedals and other controller devices to anything that has a MIDI in jack, and of course, of course we do. Um, so, excuse me while I, I grab water. I'm going to take a quick look at our question list, and we're going to move on to the step sequencer real quick. Um, and uh, GeoSync, can I use the pedal? Yeah, you can choose multiple destinations. There's um, the question is, can you use a a, um, a particular control to do multiple things at once? And um, you know, again, I still have that patch um, where my sustain pedal is opening and closing the filter, but it's also um, still changing my portamento time at the same time. So. Um, again, there's multiple layers to the modulation matrix. Um, you can set up multiple destinations uh, for a given controller. Um, again, just taking a quick look at the questions here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. 
So uh, Aquario is asking um, what kind of musical styles uh, is this product based is best for? I guess I believe you're asking. Um, I mean, due to the nature of some of the sounds in this product, the the, the solo synth engine, um, I I don't know that we're focused on on one particular genre. Um, we call this product a a performance keyboard because we're trying to give the, the keyboard player a wide range of tools that he might need in a, in a, in a live gig situation. So you, know, you have your pianos, um, there's brass sounds, there's horn sections. Um, the step sequencer, I will say, does lend itself to dance music, um, but that doesn't mean that that's the, the only type of music you can create with it. Um, so now that I've covered you know some of the specialty sounds the XWP1 can make, uh, that's probably the next best place to go is is the step sequencer. And the step sequencer honestly is um, a first of its kind. Uh, nothing like this has ever been put in a keyboard before. There's been lots of standalone devices that do this type of thing, typically drum machines, uh, but um, never has one been put in a keyboard before. And um, so just to, to give you an idea, um, the step sequencer has nine tracks. Those tracks um, do have defaults. For example, tracks one through five uh, will default to being drum sounds, um, but there are no rules. Those nine tracks can be any instrument sound you want. So I'm gonna... Uh, Put together a quick sequence just to show you how that works. Uh, I believe we have some XW owners online that are going to have some questions uh, because this is again this hasn't been done in a keyboard before. So let's switch to the other camera, and I'm going to move this one just a touch. All right, so um, I'm in step sequencer mode. Um, I I have taken the time to to make a, a template. Um, by the way, the part plus and minus buttons here, if I hit both of them at the same time, will always take me back to my first track. And you'll find um, in the XWP1 there's a lot of shortcuts like that where hitting those two buttons. Um, for example, if you're using the transpose buttons over on the right hand side, if I hit, um, if I hit them both at the same time, that will bring me back to zero. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, I have... Uh, nine tracks in my sequencer right now I have drum one selected and drum one will always default to a kick drum all right. uh, again you can change all of that but drum one is going to be my kick drum sound and I have the sequencer is running and you'll see over on the left hand side the little blue LEDs flashing as it runs through this uh, the 16 steps within this measure so um, it's like working with an old-fashioned drum machine. If I turn on a switch, I hear that note. So, and the nice thing is um, my quarter notes are marked in a different color. So you know, quickly and easily, I can put my four on the floor. Uh, in the case of if I'm doing a, a drum part, okay, or a dance part. So. Now I can go to my next part, hit the part plus button, and now I can put in a snare part. Oops, I actually hit it twice, sorry guys. There's my snare. Okay. So the great thing is I can move back and forth between these parts and, and move, you know, add different notes at different times. I'm going to go to my third track. I'm just going to slide my hand across these switches, and there's my hi-hat. Okay, now, for those of you that can see the overhead view, one thing you might notice is that my hi-hat part was only running eight steps. So one of the things I wanted to show you here um, is that each part can have a different note or a different um, length. A part doesn't have to be 16 steps. It can be 8 steps. It could be 2 steps. Each part can also have a different note value. So my hi-hat could be playing 8th notes while my other parts are playing 16ths. 
one way, one example of this is I could change my hi hat part to um, triplets. Okay, so it's running completely independent of the other tracks. All right. The, yeah. Um, so likewise, um, I could apply a swing or a groove to one part and not another. Um, and so I could swing that hi hat part. Okay. And we can adjust this while we're while we're listening. Okay. A little bit, a little bit of a lag. But um, so. While I'm in a, let me back up for, for people that are wondering how, how I got here. Um, I'm in step sequencer mode and all I'm doing is pressing the edit button. Okay, I press the edit button and the third selection on this screen is called track parameter. I'll zoom in here best I can. Alright, so the third section selection is called track parameter. At the very top of the screen, it shows D3. That means I'm on drum track three. All right. It shows how many steps are in this track, and this is where I can change my, my part to have 16 steps, or eight steps, or two steps, or any, any, any number I can think of. Just below that is where I can choose the note value, or what's called the step size. So um, it's currently eighth no or sixteenth notes. I could change it to eighth notes, okay. or triplets, or thirty-second notes if I wanted. Okay, so anywhere between um, our quarter note and up. All right below that we have note length. We have the ability to make more staccato notes um, or more legato notes, and that comes into play when we do other types of uh, sounds like bass tracks and, and things like that. And if I keep scrolling down, I'll find that swing or groove parameter and I can adjust that as a percentage. All right. So I'm going to take a quick look at the chat, but there's more uh, here in the um, step sequencer that I want to get to. Um, so Randy had a question about using the XWP-1 with other MIDI gear. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we will try and cover that. Um, keep in mind, we're about an hour into the clinic, and, and so um, I'll probably go for about 15 more minutes here, but let's uh, keep the questions coming. Try and make sure everybody's happy. Um, so before we leave the step sequencer, um, I want to show you a couple other things about um, the way this works. I was putting in parts on this step sequencer, and I'm going to turn off my, my kick and snare here and go back to that hi-hat part real quick. So I had just been using the switches here to, to input that part, that hi-hat part. Um, the sliders can also be used to control parts. So if I move a slider, and I've moved the slider to a particular position, it will give me a different note number. Okay, in this case, it's switching between open and closed hi-hats. So again, back doing, back doing dance music here, um, you know, I can, I can quickly modify that part. I can also, um, over to the left here, the middle, the middle switch, which is labeled function A slash B, if that switch is turned on, now my sliders control note velocity. So I can put accents in different places. Okay. So the sequencer um, really allows a lot of creative ways to put put parts down. So that would be more like a light performance end. Like absolutely, it's it's all designed. For this to be happening potentially live, okay, yes, yes, uh, you know, and there's a lot of you know DJs and guys that are that are doing creating music on the fly, uh, and you know the sequencer allows you to do that. And one I th one I think um, I'm gonna switch cameras here. I think 
one thing that I think happens with some people is that um, when they first start working with the step sequencer is they, they press step sequencer and they press start and they want to play their drum part from the keyboard or they want to play their bass line from the keyboard and have that part snap onto the grid but uh, and we can do that but the the P1 is designed the XWP1 and G1 are designed so that you always have your keyboard live for the other things you might be performing while you're building your sequence okay so if I want to um, use the keyboard to play a part into the step sequencer um, all I need to do is press the edit button and go into step edit. Now the keyboard is live with a particular sound and I can put that in Oops, it switched me down an octave, sorry. Um, forgot what I was doing there. So okay. Okay, so now as I play the keyboard, that part is snapping to the grid. All right. Um, so there's a total of nine tracks. Again, they, they do have default assignments as to the, the, the type of sound they, they are, um, but you can, you can change all of that. Um, one other common question that comes up is, um, what if I want um, a different kick drum? Okay rather than the, the one that's by default on that track. So anytime you're in the step sequencer, uh, just press the mixer button. And you're immediately taken to uh, the mixer view here. And again, I apologize for adjusting the camera. There we go. Where I can choose which kit is being used on that particular track. Okay, so I can choose you know, any of my electronic drum kits or standard. Um, um, and then I can go to my next part and choose which drum kit is being used for my snare and so on. All right, so it's pretty easy to, uh, to choose what sound you're using in the step sequencer, but you, um, the mixer button is the secret to doing that. All right. So I wanted to show you something. I mentioned that I wanted to come back to the phrase sequencer. And I found myself, um, I was at a, the MEAC trade show up in Canada recently. And um, I found myself using the phrase sequencer and the step sequencer. Um, and I just wanted to show you this, this is just an absolute blast to me. So I hope you'll, you'll think this is pretty cool. Um, I've got a, a pretty basic drum pattern um, and and just so everyone's clear this is a stock drum pattern that I just uh, I just changed the sounds <laughs> that's the only thing that I did to it so um, I chose just for the the swing and, and um, actually I think I may have added a little bit of swing but it was just a, a minor change and now I've got a new uh, drum beat here and I created in performance mode a little split with my solo synth in my left hand and a, uh, a cool Rhodes in my right hand. And using the phrase sequencer, uh, I came up with something pretty cool. So I'll just uh, try and give you a, an idea of what, again, this combination of tools is, is capable of. So. So I just recorded that into the phrase sequencer. Okay. So I'm going to turn on my key play switch, and hopefully all goes well. Okay. So now I can solo over the top. Cool. Other cool thing here is that. Okay. So now. Um, I can continue to riff over this in any key. And it just becomes a pretty incredible improvisational tool 
to, to work on tunes. Um, I can set this phrase to loop indefinitely. And then using the, the switch, I can go to a different key. And you know, for me, this was this was just hours of fun, <laughs> uh, just just working out a tune. And I'm working on this tune um, using a phrase se or the step sequencer, which has got this cool groove. I can switch between different patterns, okay, and call up different variations on that pattern. So one thing we didn't cover when we we're talking about the step sequencer is that each step sequence can have eight patterns and you can switch between those patterns on the fly okay so uh, you could also like like uh, an old-fashioned drum machine you can create a chain of patterns and choose okay play pattern one four times and then go to pattern two and play it twice and then go to pattern three and play it eight times you can build a chain and create a chain um, and that chain actually can choose from any of the patterns in the machine from any step sequence. Mm. So you can pull from the library of 800 patterns that are preset and create your chain of patterns. Mm. So there's a lot of, a lot of depth there. Um, one other big thing about the step sequencer is that uh, when you get to recording um, bass parts and other instrument tracks into the step sequencer is that um, those parts can transpose with you on the fly. So on the left hand side of the switch, as long as I'm not in or left hand side of the keyboard, as long as I'm not in draw bar or organ mode. Um, and if I am in draw bar organ mode, I have to quickly switch in and select the step sequencer button over here. Uh, but this whole step sequence can transpose on the fly. So just as an example, this is again a preset pattern that's built in the machine. So that entire step sequence is actually transposing based on what key that I'm playing in the uh, uh, the left hand. So um, so I can have phrases, I can have sequences, um, all going on at the same time. So. Um, I can switch to all these different patterns on the fly. So again, a, a completely interactive experience. Question from here. Uh, those patterns that are pre-programmed there, mm -hmm. uh, let's say that somebody actually does record a song. Oh, well, I hope they do. <laughs> okay. And that's, it's that those are licensed free so, and those are just considered. Yep, yep. For, those, for those of you that, that can't hear the, the question, the question is, um, if I use any of the 800 patterns that are built into the machine and I write a song, which we hope you do, um, and you become famous, uh, no, th those, those, those patterns are royalty free. They're for you to create and improvise and, and, and absolutely create your own music. Um, obviously, we, we've given you some tools that we hope are easy for you to build your own patterns, uh, but maybe the ones that are built in will be your inspiration to, to write your own song. So absolutely use them. They're completely royalty free. Um, so good question. I'm going to take a quick look at the live feed here and see what other kinds of questions. Um, ba -ba -bum. All right. So um, the one thing, I guess, last thing, we got to wrap up because we're running out of time here. Um, there's something on the XWP one called performance mode and performance mode basically is a, a snapshot of everything that's happening on the keyboard at a given time. So when you select a performance, um, you're choosing what sounds you have laid out on the keyboard, um, as well as 
uh, perhaps which arpeggiator might you might have turned on, or what phrase is turned on, what step sequence you're using, what key is it preset to play in, what tempo you're at. All of those things are stored in a performance. And um, you can store 100 of your own. We, we've also, we have 100 preset performances, which are different combinations of rhythms and sounds. Um, again, hopefully it will be inspiration for you. Uh, but you can create 100 of your own performances. So there was a question online about using performance mode in external gear. And uh, the XWP1 is in performance mode can do four zones. So each of those zones can either be an internal sound or an external MIDI device. So if I want um, you know, the top octave of my keyboard to control a sound on my iPad, you maybe have an app that I'm driving there, um, I, can, I can have a zone do that. Um, likewise, I can have other sounds on the keyboard live at the same time. So four simultaneous zones in a performance. The other interesting thing is that a performance also controls the MIDI assignments for other parts of the instrument. So in performance mode, I can choose if my step sequencer is driving an external device. So I can use my step sequencer to drive other MIDI gear. Uh, maybe I have, again, an app or uh, another keyboard uh, or a tone module of some kind. Um, any of the nine sequencer tracks in the XWP1 can drive other instruments. Mm -hmm. So integration in this product is really absolutely amazing. Um, there's one thing, and people jump in online if, if, uh, if they're aware, or those of you that are here. Um, it will even address the MIDI outs and the USB outs independently. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen that before. So that allows me again to control one device over MIDI and another device be it my computer or my iPad over USB at the same time and completely independently so um, integration with other gear is pretty remarkable um, I did mention earlier I believe you know if you have an iPad um, you can bring audio into the instrument there's actually a couple different ways to do that there's a stereo eighth inch audio in on the back and um, that, again, for an iPad or an MP3 player or something like that, the stereo in just, just passes audio through. Um, however, the line instrument and the, or the line input and the mic input allow you to process that sound through the solo synth engine. Um, and on that note, I just I, I want to show this is kind of a not a hidden secret, but um, I guess it's not well documented. Uh, if you have a solo synth patch, you can actually choose in the mixer for other sounds to go through the solo synth engine. So, in the case of a sequence, and I'm just arbitrarily grabbing a preset, a preset dance sequence that's in here, I can take any of those tracks, or all of them, and run them through my filter. Okay. okay. So if in my solo synth I had an LFO um, that was synced to tempo, I could have that filter moving to the tempo of my sequence, um, creating a lot of animation with a with a dance track like this. You could also probably sing through that right now. Not, it wouldn't be a vocoder, but it would. Yeah, be it, it doesn't do vocoding, but again, any any audio that you run through it would would be processed by the filter and yeah. or the effects. Which would be cool. Uh, looking for that. Absolutely, absolutely, a lot of fun. Um, so, taking a, one last look at uh, questions. Uh, will I do a future clinic about the XWG1? Um, I can't see from this view how many people are online watching this one, uh, but it looked like earlier that we had uh, a, quite a few, and uh, the answer to that question is yes. Um, I mean, for about a month from now, right around um, the second week of July, um, might be able to pull it off on July 5th. 
Um, but we'll check. Uh, maybe we'll do it here again at Plant 10 Studios. They've been an awesome host for us. So uh, we'll take a look at that. But yes, we'll absolutely do um, future clinics on the XWG1, cover how it's different from this product. Definitely has some, some tricks up its sleeve. Um, dun, 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 dun. All right. So now I guess... Uh, if there aren't any other closing questions, uh, I guess the thing for me to do is choose a winner. Um, and I'm going to let somebody that uh, is completely unbiased and hasn't been, uh, doesn't know any of the names on this list that I do. Um, my son actually has been over here helping me tonight. Uh, and I'm going to let him at random scroll back through the chat list here. Um, and we're going to give that person uh, an XWP1. So, dun dun dun. <laughs> All right. And uh, the person that has been chosen, who's been online for quite a while, uh, Chuck Vasquez. Um, you have won yourself an XWP1. Now, uh, since you're asking a specific question, oh, you already have one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you a G1. So uh, congratulations, Chuck. We're going to hook you up with an XWG1. Um, together, it is an absolute um, blast to hook them both up, have uh, two solo synth engines going at once, uh, and again, we'll cover some of the details on the G1 next time. But uh, congratulations, Chuck. Um, I'm going to chat with you privately here in a second if I can. In fact, uh, uh, tell you what, I guess I'm announcing my email address here to the whole world. I'm going to uh, hold on just one second. When we close, keep, the, keep your chat window open, Chuck, um, and I'll send you a message, and uh, we'll get you hooked up with that XWG1. So, uh, again, I wanted to thank our friends here at uh, Planet 10 Studios in Chicago. Um, if you need some, some multi-track recording done, this is an absolutely unbelievable facility. So I'd recommend that you check it out uh, here on the, the northwestern suburbs of Chicago. Great facility, and thanks to all the guys here that helped us out tonight. Um, and uh, we hope to see you here next time. Uh, my name is Mike Martin, I'm with Casio, and we'll see you at our next online clinic here on Ustream TV. Thank you.